Just like children learn to speak, the young of many bird species learn to sing the correct song by associating with other older individuals of the same species. Learning to sing the correct song is vitally important because song plays an important role in attaining a nesting territory and a partner. Thus, similar to human language, song is a good example of a cultural trait that is maintaining a population by sharing information between associates that live together and interact with each other. Given current rates of biodiversity loss, there is a risk that endangered species could lose important cultural traits such as songs if young birds cannot find older birds to learn from. However, there is little evidence that population decline can lead to the loss of song culture in wild animals. We studied the songs of male region honey eaters, a critically endangered songbird endemic to southeastern Australia. As recently as the 1930s, region honey eaters were a common bird of suburban Sydney and Melbourne, but extensive clearing of their woodland habitats has seen the population crash over the past 50 years. Our best estimate is that there may be fewer than 300 region honey eaters persisting in the wild across their vast range. Most breeding activity is now restricted to two areas in New South Wales, the Blue Mountains west of Sydney and the Northern Tablelands west of Armadale. We recorded the songs of male region honey eaters we located through our population monitoring program between 2015 and 2019. We also recorded the songs of captive bred birds and compiled a library of songs of male region honey eaters recorded between 1980 and 2011. We found that birds occurring in the Blue Mountains sang very different songs to males occurring in the Northern Tablelands. Here is a song of a typical male occurring in the Blue Mountains. And here is a song of a male from the Northern Tablelands. Remarkably, we found 18 males whose songs sounded nothing like a region honey eater and instead closely resembled the songs of another Australian bird species. This one sounded like a little wattle bird. This one sounded like a noisy fryer bird. This one, a black-faced cuckoo shrike. And this one sounded like a little fryer bird. Regent honey eaters that had apparently learned the songs of other bird species occurred at lower population density. That is, where we found these birds, there were fewer other male regent honey eaters nearby than there were around males who sang properly. Regent honey eaters are very challenging species to study. We still don't know where they go when they leave their breeding grounds. However, we assume that the regent honey eater population is now so small and sparsely distributed that some young males are unable to locate other older regent honey eaters to learn their song from and are instead learning the songs of other birds they hear singing in the landscape. Even in birds that do learn to sing a regent honey eater song, we found that songs were becoming less complex over time. Importantly, we found that females were less likely to pair a nest with males who sang unusual songs. This could exacerbate population decline if females breed less as more males learn unusual songs. We also found that captive bred region honey eaters sing songs that are completely different from and less complex than their wild counterparts. Here is a song of a captive bred region honey eater. This has important implications for the success of the captive breeding program as wild females might avoid nesting with captive bred males if they are not impressed by their unusual songs. In sum, we show that population decline is having a major negative impact on the song culture in the Regent Honey Eater. Devising ways of helping Regent Honey Eaters to learn to sing the correct songs could be a vital way of saving them from extinction. <laughs>